John Ford is probably the most celebrated American filmmaker. In a career of about 140 films, he won a record four Academy Awards for Best Director. I mean, Martin Scorsese only won one, Spielberg two. This guy won four Academy Awards for Best Director. And he's also, you know, for films such as The Quiet Man, The Informer, The Grapes of Wrath, he's probably more widely known for his westerns. Half of the 140 films he made were westerns. He had a great partnership with actors like John Wayne in particular, Henry Fonda, Jimmy Stewart, who made classical westerns like Stagecoach, Fort Apache, and probably most memorably, uh, The Searchers. And uh, what's sometimes kind of forgotten about John Ford is John Ford is, was an Irish-American filmmaker. His parents had emigrated from the West, actually, from, uh, from Spiddle and Yarran Islands. And he was born in Portland, but his Irish ancestry was very important to him and really kind of uh, influenced all the films he made to the point that he came back in 1952 to make that kind of great Irish-American film, The Quiet Man. And so that's why he's so important, and that's why we really wanted to kind of uh, bring him home and kind of uh, reintroduce uh, people to John Ford. Mm. Now, you mentioned The Quiet Man, and I've heard that being described as John Ford's kind of love letter to Ireland. You, you said it there that he was very proud of his Irish heritage. Why do you think that was, or what connected him back home to Ireland, even though he was born in the States? Well, he was born in the, in the States, but he was first generation. So his parents were Irish. Uh, they went over in their, uh, in their 20s to America, and he found opportunities to come home wherever possible. Uh, and by home, I mean coming home to Ireland, coming home to the West. He would often, uh, he came back in the, in the 20s and time and again. And in his career, he kind of really focused on ethnicity, where other directors making Westerns, you know, everyone was American. He would accentuate not just the, the, the Irish immigrants, but also Italian immigrants and other ethnicities. And it was a really important kind of touchstone of his work. And even when he couldn't bring productions to Ireland, he made a lot of films that were based in Ireland. So he would have made films like The Informer, his first best director, Oscar Wynne, was adapted from Limo Flaherty's novel. Limo Flaherty was from the Iron Islands and uh, supposedly a distant cousin of Ford. So even before he, could make, he had the clout to bring productions to Ireland, he was making Irish set stories with Irish characters to the point that he brought over a lot of Irish actors, actors who would have been associated with the Abbey Theatre in Dublin, like Barry Fitzgerald and Arthur Shields. He brought those over for productions like Adaptation of the Plough and the Stars and really gave them their start in America. And so that link was always very vibrant for him. And then subsequently, when he had that clout, he started bringing productions like The Quiet Man, like The Rising of the Moon to Ireland. They really gave us kind of our first taste of, a, of an Irish film industry. You sound really passionate uh, about his work, and I, I, I'm guessing that's why you're a programmer. Uh, but with his long catalogue of movies, I mean, there's over, what, 137 films in my last count? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how did you go about picking films to go screening, or, or what's the plan for, for the event? Well, the great thing about John Ford as a filmmaker, and as you find out, is huge back catalogue of work. So this isn't a once-off event. This is something that John Ford Arnold will run annually. So we didn't feel the need to cram it all in in the first year, but rather to pick kind of key highlights and key touchstones in his career. So some of the kind of the key screens said, well, we have to have a John Ford Western. The Searchers is a wonderful as. Uh, Western made in the 1950s in Monument Valley, the kind of red dust plains with John Wayne. It's possibly his most celebrated film. So that would be perfect as an outdoor screening. So we're going to have an outdoor screening on Friday night in Temple Bar. And then we said, what are his other kind of classic films? Well, of course, it's the 60th anniversary of The Quiet Man. So you couldn't have a John Ford symposium without that. So we'll have that on Sunday evening with uh, his grandson and biographer Dan Ford introducing that film. And then to kind of coincide with that, there's a, a documentary just due to be released called John Ford Dream the Quiet Man, made by an Irish filmmaker called Shea Mary Doyle. So that will be a kind of a double bill, so to speak. And so that made perfect since the 60th anniversary. And then also we looked at other films he's made. Upstream. Upstream is this silent film he made uh, that was taught lost for years. A lot of his early films were lost. Recently discovered in New Zealand archives and is getting its first Irish screening at the John Ford Ireland Film Symposium. So even if you think you know John Ford, you probably haven't seen this film yet because it really hasn't been screened anywhere outside of the US. So that's kind of a, a unique event there. Also, his, the film that made his reputation was a film called The Iron Horse. It was about the building of the Transcontinental Railroad, an early Western, about how they built a railroad from the east to the west across America. And we're going to open that in a national concert hall, big venue with a, the RT Concert Orchestra actually playing. So a big musical accompaniment. It kind of really gives it the, the, the reception it deserves. So that's how we kind of went about uh, picking 
kind of key screenings there. But we're not confining it to, to screenings. There's there's a whole host of other events. We have a, a lot of huge name internationals and Irish filmmakers coming in. Peter Bogdanovich, who was one of the leading figures of New Hollywood, would have been a contemporary of Scorsese and Francis Ford Coppola, made the last picture show. He was a biographer for it, made a documentary on him. He's going to come and give a, be involved in the public interview, talking not only about his own career, but also Ford. Uh, we have other filmmakers like Irish filmmakers like Jim Sheridan, uh, John Borman, Brian Cork, who currently makes Game of Thrones, novelists like Pat McCabe and Colin Bateman, who are all hugely enthusiastic about for and they're going to come in and be involved in, in, in lectures and, and, and panel discussions. Uh, discussing for so there's a real variety of events there it sounds like it's going to be a jam-packed four days and for anyone that is maybe traveling up to the capital for the weekend it, it, there's definitely something there for everyone yeah there really is and it's largely taking place in and around temple bar and so you know i would suggest for you know people to kind of come across for one two maybe uh, the whole four days of the festival there'll always be something on and something exciting so the events i didn't mention we uh gave an award, the, the inaugural John Ford Award, to a filmmaker who's indebted to Ford's exit, that's Clint Eastwood. We gave him an award in, in December and we're acknowledging his contributions to cinema as well. So his son, Kyle Eastwood, who's a prominent American jazz musician, is actually going to come in, introduce a screening of his great film, Unforgiven, uh, be involved in a, in a panel discussion about music for the screen, and then perform with his band in, in the Button Club in Dublin. So there'll be stuff even late into the night. Uh, similarly, Joel Cox, who is Clint Eastwood's editor, has worked for him on the last, uh, for the last 30 years and his last 30 films, everything from the editor of Iwo Jima through to Gran Torino. He's going to come and give a, a masterclass and also help introduce that screening, 20th anniversary screening of Unforgiven. So there's always going to be something going on, a different screening, uh, a filmmaker's panel, uh, you know, a, a public interview, and there won't be any, any shortage of events. And it's not just for, you know, film boss, of course, will be enthusiastic about it, but even filmmakers uh, or aspiring filmmakers, people looking to get involved in production, we, all these big international names who are hugely enthusiastic about Ford, going to be talking about not just Ford, but their own careers, and giving insights into filmmaking, which I think to anyone aspiring along those lines career-wise would be a real kind of uh, interesting uh, set of events. Now, one thing um, I've noticed from my research on John Ford is that he, like many, I suppose, brilliant directors or actors or musicians, a man that played by his own rules. And I saw an interview actually only the other night from uh, Lee Marvin, who worked with him on Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Exactly, and yeah. he said that he had a knack of keeping actors on their toes. So I, I know the documentary on, on John Ford is going to be very interesting. And I also have a, a clip, actually, of uh, an interview Steven Spielberg did only recently and where he spoke about uh, the influences of John Ford. I'm going to just play that now. This this old dude walks into the room <laughs> wearing like a safari jacket, a patch, and a patch over an eye, yeah, yeah. chewing on a handkerchief oh with, a, with a, a, a half you know chewed up and very masticated and wet cigar in his hand. <laughs> I saw all this stuff instantly, wow. you know, and he had kiss marks, but I mean like not not makeout marks, but the kind of perfect kiss <laughs> marks, two on his cheek here, two here, a couple on the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks right into his office, and his assistant grabs a box of Kleenex and runs in after him. <laughs> and then she comes out about five minutes later, and she's got the Kleenex. It's all red. Yeah. <laughs> red. And she says, okay, you, you've, you've, got, you've got five minutes, probably one minute right. wow. with him. That's right. it. And I walked into the office, and he was sitting behind his desk with his feet up on the desk. And he sat me down, and he just... Uh, said, so they tell me you want to be a picture maker, is what he called it. Wow. I, I never heard that before, but I never forgot it. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I, I really do. I've made all these little eight millimeter movies. And, and he said, what do you know? He said, what do you know about art? And I, 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 I just was stammering. I wasn't expecting that question. He said, you see those paintings around the office? I said, yeah. He said, well, get up and walk over to the first painting. He said, tell me what you see in that painting. And I said, well, I see two Indians on horses. He said, no, 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 no. Where's the horizon? Oh, wow. wow. So I said, well, the horizon's, you know, you know way above the, the head of the Indians. He said, fine, walk on to the next one. He said, what do you see in that painting? And stupidly, I said, well, there's some cavalry on horses. <laughs> I hadn't learned anything, you know. And he said, no, no, no. Where's the horizon? And I said, well, the horizon is the very, very bottom of the painting. He said, okay, get over here. And I stood in front of his desk. He said, when you're able to distinguish the art of the horizon at the bottom of a frame or at the top of the frame, but not 
going right through the center of the frame, when you're able to appreciate why it's at the top and why it's at the bottom, mm -hmm. you might make a pretty good picture maker. Mm -hmm. Now get the f out of here. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, that was Steven Spielberg talking about the legend that is John Ford. And if you have any interest in John Ford, then I'm telling you, get along to uh, the John Ford Ireland Film Symposium, which takes place from the 7th to the 10th of June. And uh, the programmer for the event, Liam Burke, is still with us. Liam, for anyone that is planning to, to check it out, how do they get tickets, where did it go, or what's the plan? First port of call, go to johnfordireland.org, which is our website, which is a lot of information about Ford himself, the key events we're going to be running, and also ticketing information. So that would be your first port of call. Then block book the 7th to the 10th of June, because if, if you're enthusiastic, if you're interested, or even just kind of mildly curious, you're going to want to block book those four days to be in Dublin in around Temple Bar for the, the huge number of events we have there. Well, Liam Burke, I hope it's a, a very successful first year for the John Ford Ireland Film Symposium. It all takes place from the 7th to the 10th of June. And as Liam said, you can check out the website johnfordireland.org for ticket information. So the very best of luck, Liam. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Thanks.